for you on the 2009 model Mitsubishi Pajero turbo diesel and there's some quite big changes with this model compared to the previous model Triton turbo diesel obviously this model's the same as the short wheelbase long wheelbase model but later on here in Australia Mitsubishi have changed the availability of this model as well but for comparison purposes obviously the Triton is one of the things that we've done a lot of R&D on um, and for comparison this one, to, I've made a list here, it's got a revised turbo into uh, and the electronic boost control. Previous model Triton only had a um, manual boost control, whereas this one's got electronic boost control, which is a fantastic feature through the ECU. It's got a repositioned intercooler, um, which is now below the radiator instead of in the front, like on the Triton. Um, it's got a much larger inbox airbox now, including a larger surface area on the air filter. Um, and one of the major things that Mitsubishi have changed on this model, it's got a revised cylinder head design and inert manifold for improved efficiency. Now, that's what Mitsubishi say, but from our point of view, it's pretty obvious the main reason why they changed it which was to reduce engine noise. Um, of course, this has got a five-speed transmission, whereas previous models got a four-speed transmission. So this particular car is on our dyno as one of our upgrades with the factory ECU tuning to get more torque and power out of it, which was succeeded so um, dramatically with the Triton turbo diesel um, and the next step what we'll be doing here is upgrading the factory U ECU using Ecotech software and then making complete adjustments to the ECU electronically without any plug-in chips or interceptors or um, other external devices. So what you'll see next is all the dyno runs and then we'll give you a summary at the end. Hi, so now we've finished the dyno tuning of the car. Obviously, as you can see in this dyno graph, how good the result was. And just to point out some particularly pertinent points about this car, remember, it's rev limited to a bit over 4,000 RPM. Um, so of course the power run obviously stops at 4,000. That's a pretty low number compared to a normally aspirated car, but obviously we're talking about huge torque. Peak torque factory standard is around 2,400 RPM, but it drops off dramatically um, after that. Um, on our hub dyno, it read about 430 Newton metres. Um, the increase in torque after the ECU upgrade and retune goes up by another 40 to 50 Newton metres, you know, close to 500 Newton metres of torque. You can see in the graph there. Um, power, obviously, where it comes on to boost, starts at around 2300, 2400, and then just steadily climbs. The interesting thing is um, peak power at the low RPM, around 2500, is approximately 110 kilowatts. With the tune, it's got the same power, but now at around 2200. So it's picked up a fair bit of bottom end as well, which may obviously not be easily felt when you're driving the car. But the big kicker, which makes a big improvement, is at around 3600 RPM, factory standard power was around 125 kilowatts. We've now got a whopping 148. So you're talking well over 20 kilowatts increase of peak power around 3600 RPM and a dramatic improvement of torque right across the rev range from as low as 2300 all the way through the rev limit of 4000. So this car is going to be able to tow it incredibly well, gun up hills and one kick down in the um, hook to keep it on the cruise control. Uh, have some really good bottom end torque. The next step that we're going to be taking with this car is putting an exhaust system on it because that's the next restriction. It's important to note you don't put an exhaust on these cars unless you do the tune at the same time or you do the tune first and then the exhaust. Putting an exhaust on without the tune is just a waste of money. It won't give you the improvement that you expect. Um, obviously, typically we can deliver more power with an ECU upgrade than most workshops do with a tune only. And remember, this is probably going to deliver better fuel economy, less smoke, um, it's a very moderate change in boost because um, boost on a turbo diesel engine doesn't have as dramatic effect on performance as what it does on a petrol engine um, and these cars run a lot more boost factory standard than the previous model Triton. So there you have it, good increase in performance. The next step we're going to do obviously is chase more power with the exhaust, 
For more information, you can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and of course, mrtperformance.com.au. I'm Brent Middleton. I really hope this video has helped you. Look forward to giving you more information about your Mitsubishi Turbo Diesel model in the future. Thanks for watching.